Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And we're going to, in this video, return to the subject of MOSFETs. Uh, I did dis discuss MOSFETs in video 80, which is well over a year ago now, so it um, might be worth having a look at that, but it's not essential, as I am going to recap on the important bits of theory for what I want to do today. And what I want to do today is explore a particular characteristic of a MOSFET, and that is the way that the channel resistance changes uh, with respect to the gate voltage. So let's start by having a quick look at the theory and the circuit I'm going to use to do that testing. Okay we're going to start with a recap um, of enhancement mode MOSFET operation. So here is a, a stylized drawing of the um, construction of a MOSFET and um, first thing to note is that the little green layer between the gate and the, the substrate of the device is the um, oxide layer, which is uh, an insulator. And so the gate is not um, electrically connected uh, to the um, rest of the transistor, which is why, of course, there is no current involved in, um, in and out of the gate. So um, if we apply a positive voltage to the gate with respect to the source, uh, that uh, positive voltage acts upon the substrate in an electrostatic manner and serves to um, increase uh, the enhanced area uh, opposite the um, gate. I've marked it there in that sort of grey colour and uh, my understanding is that um, at a subatomic level uh, electrons are attracted towards that enhancement layer and that's why uh, conductivity is improved. I'm sure there'll be somebody a lot cleverer than me along to point out my errors but for the meantime uh, that's what I uh, that's what I understand by it so what I want to do is measure um, the uh, resistance of that channel um, now that's going to be quite difficult I can't really do it directly so I'm going to um, do that in a in an in indirect manner and so let's look at the circuit I'm going to use for that so the test circuit then pretty straightforward um, we've got a MOSFET there with a 1k uh, current limiting resistor and I'm just the reason I've put that in is that I'm expecting the uh, MOSFET channel resistance to um, be very low once uh, we've passed a certain voltage on the gate and without that 1k resistor I don't suppose the MOSFET would last very long acting as a as a dead short and you can see I've got a 10k resistor 10k potentiometer sorry potential divider on the gate that just allows us to to crudely adjust um, the gate voltage from from ground uh, up to uh, full supply voltage which in the case of the first circuit is going to be uh, 5 volts so how are we going to do measure resistance uh, then? So we're going to have two test points, test point one and two. Test point one is the gate voltage and test point two is the drain voltage. Um, and knowing the drain voltage and the supply voltage, uh, we can then use the, the um, voltage divider equation. There it is, voltage out is equal to R2 over uh, R1 plus R2 times uh, the voltage in. If we rearrange that equation in terms of um, R2, which is effectively the MOSFET in this circuit, uh, we can then um, calculate the resistance. So R2 is equal to um, voltage out times R1 over V in minus V out. That's the theory. So let's start with um, the first device then. Uh, let's now go to the bench. Okay, here's the arrangement. Um, I'm going to take the measurements. Uh, the circuit, as you've just seen on the slides, is here. There's the FET. There's the current limiting resistor, and we've got the potentiometer here. Uh, two meters set up, both reading voltage. This um, meter here is reading the gate voltage. Uh, that's the voltage between um, ground and the gate. Currently, that's just for. All intents and purposes it's actually at ground and this um, meter here is reading the voltage uh, in between the FET and the uh, resistor currently almost at 5 volts and the supply voltage is um, we're going to work on it being 5 volts I'm using the stabilized supply so if I move the potentiometer 
you'll see the gate voltage begins to rise and although that does appear to be moving in reality it's changed very little um, so if I go up there, so the gate's now at 1 volt and as you can see the difference in, in the voltage uh, between the, the drain and, and the source is very small indeed it's barely changed if I go up to about 1.5 volts again still not a great deal to change really but once I reach 1.5 volts we're now starting to see about half a volt of change and if I keep climbing up get to about well there's 1.8 volts you can see we have now got a totally different reading we've gone from 5 point something to 0 0.08 um, and if I go back down to let's say 1.6 we're straight up to 4 volts again so it really does fall off a cliff at this point here now if I carry on take the gate voltage up to about well there we are let's go at 3.5 and, and we've got um, 12 millivolts there um, and if I keep on going all the way up as far as it'll go uh, we've got what, 11 millivolts so um, I'm, what I'm not going to do is bore you by um, getting you to watch me take every measurement but what we'll do now is we'll hop back to the slides and uh, we'll look at the results in the form of a table okay so here's let's look at the results for the 2N7000 uh, gate voltage on the left and calculated um, resistance on the right and as ever with um, lists of numbers that's pretty meaningless so let's get Excel to uh, plot that as a graph for us and we've got resistance up the left hand side and uh, gate voltage along the bottom and you can see that um, the resistance begins to drop dramatically above one volt and uh, once it gets beyond about two volts in fact by the time you've got to not even two and a half volts you can see that uh, gate resistance is, is very low indeed and continues in a very low state uh, as you increase the voltage up to, to six there so um, a very abrupt change uh, on uh, on the uh, internal resistance of the MOSFET um, with the um, change in resistance okay let's now um, go back to the bench and let's look at a slightly different uh, MOSFET um, it's the, the 2N7000 is a, a relatively um, low power device and I want to use a slightly higher power device and that higher power device is the um, IFRZ44 um, uh, so let's uh, go to the bench and see how that one checks out OK, here we are back on the bench again then. Same arrangement, we've got the IFR44Z instead of the 2N7000. Um, but otherwise we've got uh, same potentiometer and uh, current limiting resistor. Uh, this is the gate voltage and this is the voltage at the, uh, if you like, at the um, resistive divider point between the 1K resistor and the, uh, and the MOSFET. So we're just, just under 1 volt there and we're still pretty much at supply level and it pretty much stays that way as we advance past 1.2 volts and we start to see a little bit of a change now at 1.3 and as we approach 1.4 it's beginning to drop and hopefully any second now passing 1.5 approaching 1.6 volts trying to be as careful as I can with the trim pot you can see it starting to drop now on the right hand meter and we're going to reach that point just like with the 2N7000 where we sort of fall off the cliff here we go at 1.7 volts on the gate uh, the voltage is now plunging across the divider and as we approach 1.8 volts um, you can see it's just gone it's just gone to one volt there and by the time we get to around about two volts um, we've just got um, just a few millivolts um, flowing there now so in other words the um, device is, um, is fully saturated if I go up to 3.6 volts you can see there the, sure the fourth digit is 
I'm not remotely accurate on these meters. OK, that's the arrangement. I won't bore you with collecting data again. Let's uh, have a look at the graph. OK, the IFR Z44 results then. Uh, you can see, um, although it's a slightly different shape curve, uh, essentially we've got exactly the same uh, effect going on. Um, the uh, resistance of the device uh, reduces dramatically uh, once you're above, um, well in this case probably about 1.7, 1.8 volts, and by the time it reaches 2 volts it's, uh, it's virtually zero. Now that's um, a little bit unfair, that's uh, partly due to the way Excel has drawn the graph. So if I just take the last four results and just show you that bottom bit of the graph, uh, you can see there, obviously that's a different scale on the inset, you can see there that uh, um, as the voltage comes down, it doesn't, um, sorry, as the resistance comes down, uh, it does uh, not instantly hit the bottom, quite in the way the large graph shows, but it does um, uh, fairly rapidly nonetheless still approach the bottom line. Now that phenomena is something I want to come back to in a future video. However for now uh, this is uh, what I wanted to show you in terms of this video. So there we have IFR 40, sorry, IFR Z 44 results. Okay well an in-depth look at uh, a couple of MOSFETs there and uh, what I want to do as I intimated in the uh, um, comments I made on the last uh, results slide there is that it's a topic I want to return to and um, there's certainly going to be at least another one more video on this topic possibly another two depends um, how we get on I've not made them yet and it also depends on, on what I find out along the way um, because quite often when I do these videos uh, I'm on a learning journey myself um, I'm far from being uh, a deep expert in these topics so uh, I'm learning at uh, the same time as you are hopefully thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video